Welcome to today's Advent podcast, which is brought to you with the kind compliments of Fully Catholic Music. Fully Catholic Music is dedicated to creating faith-inspired music that will uplift hearts and minds. Discover our releases by going to music.fullycatholic.com and remember to tune into Fully Catholic Radio for continuous inspiration by going to fullycatholic.com slash catholic dash radio or by downloading our app from your favorite app store or by telling your Alexa device, Alexa, play Fully Catholic Radio. Let us grow in faith, hope, and love together this Advent season and beyond. Now, let us journey into today's reflections. Welcome to our deep dive today into peace and uh, presence and how we can prepare for Christ's coming. And, you know, before we begin, can we just take a second to appreciate that intro music? Mm. It was actually created using AI. Mm. Big thanks to Fully Catholic Music for sharing that with us. But getting to the heart of our deep dive, we're taking 12 Thursday of the second week of Advent as our guide today. A very fitting soundtrack as we explore how technology and faith intersect, you know, in our modern world. Right. It's this cool blend of the ancient and the, you know, cutting edge. Yeah. But, okay, enough geeking out about music. Let's get to the readings. Absolutely. The readings today, they offer some really profound insights into how we cultivate peace as we journey through Advent. Totally. 
the first reading from Zechariah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion. Mm -hmm. See, I am coming to dwell among you. It's like this powerful promise, mm -hmm. you know, full of anticipation and joy. Yeah. But what really strikes me is the idea of God, like, choosing to dwell among us. Yeah, it's not just about a distant God observing, but a God who desires intimacy, closeness with mm. his people. You know, it foreshadows the mystery of the incarnation where God quite literally takes up residence within humanity through Jesus. So it's not just about God being present, but about that presence being deeply personal, mm -hmm. relational. Like how often do we settle for a surface level relationship with God mm -hmm. instead of really like inviting him into the messiness of our lives? That's a great point. You yep. know, we might acknowledge God's presence intellectually, but how often do we truly open our hearts to his dwelling within us? It's a challenge to move beyond simply knowing about God to truly experiencing his presence. And I think that's where Mary's yes comes in. Right. Yeah. The gospel reading from Luke describes the Annunciation. Right. That pivotal moment where Mary agrees to become the mother of God. It's not just a sweet Christmas story. Mm -hmm. It's like this radical act of trust and surrender. Absolutely. Mary's yes is a model for all of us. Think about it. She was young, likely with her own dreams and plans. Yet she chose to embrace God's will, even though it meant stepping into the unknown, possibly facing ridicule or danger. And her yes quite literally made space for God to dwell among us in the most intimate way possible. Yeah. It makes you wonder, what could God accomplish in our lives if we responded with that same level of openness and trust? What would it look like for us to echo Mary's yes in our daily lives? What might we need to let go of? What fears or anxieties might be holding us back from fully embracing God's will? These are profound questions, yeah. especially during Advent. A time of preparation and anticipation. Yeah. It's like we're invited to examine our own hearts and make space for Christ's coming, just as Mary did. Precisely. Advent is not merely about waiting for Christmas. It's about actively preparing ourselves to receive Christ anew in our lives. And speaking of receiving Christ, the source also highlights the connection between these readings and Our Lady of Guadalupe, whose feast day just passed. What parallels do you see there? Is there a connection between God's promise to dwell among us and Mary's appearance to St. Juan Diego. Absolutely. It's fascinating how Our Lady of Guadalupe reflects these themes in such a tangible way. God, who promised to dwell among us, reaches out to the indigenous people of Mexico through Mary. It's like God chose a way to connect with them on their terms, using imagery and symbolism that resonated with their culture. Exactly. The image of Mary pregnant with Jesus standing on the moon and adorned with the sun and stars it spoke volumes to the Aztec people. It conveyed God's presence, love, and protection in a way that transcended language barriers. It wasn't just about words. It was about a visible, tangible manifestation of God's love and presence. Just like in the readings, God chose to dwell among them, meeting them where they were. It's a powerful reminder that God's love transcends cultural boundaries. It's a universal language that speaks to the deepest longings of the human heart. And what's striking is that both in the readings and in Mary's apparition as Our Lady of Guadalupe, the emphasis is on peace. But it's not just the absence of conflict, right? Right. It's something deeper. You're absolutely right. The peace that these readings point to is a deep abiding peace that flows from God's presence. It's the kind of peace that St. Paul describes as surpassing all understanding. So how do we access that kind of peace? How does understanding Mary's role, both in Scripture and through apparitions like Our Lady of Guadalupe, actually lead us toward the peace that Christ offers? That's a great question, and it's one we'll delve into further as we continue our deep dive today. It's fascinating how both the readings and the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe, you know, highlight the importance of saying yes to God, even when it's difficult or doesn't make immediate sense. You know, Mary's yes led to a peace that surpasses understanding a peace rooted in deep trust and surrender to God's will. That's such a powerful thought. But let's be honest, saying yes to God can be tough sometimes. Life throws curveballs, doubts creep in, and it's easy to get caught up in fear and worry. How do we even begin to cultivate that kind of radical trust, especially when things feel chaotic? You know, it's a lifelong journey, not a one-time decision. One thing that stands out to me in these readings is the emphasis on God's initiative. God doesn't wait for us to be perfect or have it all figured out before reaching out. He actively pursues us, promises to dwell among us, even sends his own son to bridge the gap between us. So it's not about us mustering up enough faith or being good enough to earn God's favor. Yeah. It's about recognizing that he's already there, waiting for us to open our hearts to his presence. Exactly. And that's where practices like prayer reconciliation and the Eucharist come in. 
They're not just rituals or obligations, but pathways to encountering God's peace in tangible ways. Think about the rosary, for example. It's not just about reciting words, but about meditating on the mysteries of Christ's life, allowing those events to shape our hearts and minds. It's like we're entering into those sacred moments, walking alongside Mary as she witnesses the unfolding of God's plan. Precisely. Yeah. And as we do that, we draw closer to Christ, allowing his peace to permeate our being. Similarly, the Sacrament of Reconciliation offers us a chance to experience God's mercy and forgiveness in a tangible way. It's about acknowledging our brokenness, receiving healing, and starting anew with a clean slate. It's like shedding the weight of guilt and shame and allowing God's peace to flow into those wounded places. Exactly. And then there's the Eucharist, the source and summit of our faith. When we receive the body and blood of Christ, we are literally receiving the Prince of Peace into our very being. Wow. When you put it that way, it's clear why the Eucharist is considered so central to our faith. It's not just a symbol, but a real encounter with Christ, a source of profound peace and nourishment. Absolutely. And these practices, when embraced with intention and openness, can truly transform us from the inside out. They help us cultivate the kind of deep, abiding peace that Christ came to give, a peace that transcends circumstances and anxieties. So it's not about escaping the challenges of life, but about facing them with a heart rooted in God's peace, knowing that we're not alone in the struggle. That's a beautiful way to put it. And you know what strikes me is that Our Lady of Guadalupe embodies this very peace. Her message to St. Juan Diego wasn't about fear or judgment. It was about reassurance, comfort, and maternal love. It's like she was saying, don't worry, I'm here, I'm your mother, and I'm here to guide you to my son, who is the source of all peace. Precisely. And her appearance, so full of symbolism and beauty, spoke volumes to the indigenous people of Mexico. It wasn't just about words. It was about encountering God's love and peace in a tangible, culturally relevant way. It makes me think about how God continues to meet us where we are today. Maybe not through dramatic apparitions, but through quiet whispers in our hearts, through the beauty of creation, through the kindness of strangers, through the sacraments. Absolutely. God's presence is all around us if we have the eyes to see and the heart to receive it. And that brings us back to the call to action. The source challenges us to consider. How can we make these concepts of peace and presence more real in our daily lives? What concrete steps can we take to cultivate the kind of peace that Christ offers? That's where it gets really interesting. The source suggests prayer, especially the rosary reconciliation in the Eucharist. But it's not just about going through the motions. It's about engaging our hearts and minds. So how do we do that? How do we make these practices more than just check marks on a to-do list? I have to admit, sometimes they can feel a bit routine. Hmm. I think it starts with approaching them with a sense of intentionality and wonder. Instead of rushing through the rosary, try savoring each mystery, allowing yourself to be drawn into the scene. Imagine yourself present at the Annunciation, the Nativity, the Crucifixion. So it's about slowing down and being present, mm. just like we've been talking about. Instead of treating prayer as a chore, we approach it as a conversation. Yeah. A way to connect with the divine. Exactly. And with confession, Try reflecting on the areas of your life where you need God's healing touch. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable and honest with yourself and with God. I know with the Eucharist, maybe that means taking a few moments after receiving communion to simply be still and allow Christ's presence to wash over you. Beautifully said. It's about cultivating an attitude of gratitude and receptivity. It's about allowing these practices to become encounters with the divine moments where we experience God's love and peace in a tangible way. That prayer always hits me right in the feels. There's something so powerful about its simplicity and directness. It's like St. Francis is giving us a blueprint for living out the gospel in a way that brings peace not just to ourselves, but to the world around us. You know what strikes me? It's how closely it echoes Mary's own example. Think about it. She chose to be an instrument of God's peace by saying yes to his plan, even when it meant facing uncertainty and potential hardship. She embraced pardon and forgiveness, nurturing the life growing within her, even though its very existence would challenge the social norms of her time. And in her quiet surrender, she brought hope into a world shrouded in darkness. It's like she embodied those very lines from the prayer without even realizing it. And it makes me wonder, what does it actually look like for us to be instruments of peace in our everyday lives? It's easy to get overwhelmed by the enormity of it all, or injustice division. How can we possibly make a difference? I think that's where the beauty of St. Francis's prayer lies. It shifts our focus from grand gestures to the small, seemingly insignificant acts of love and compassion that we can offer each day. It starts with our own hearts, with choosing to sow love instead of hatred in our interactions with others, even when they're difficult. It's about offering pardon 
instead of holding on to grudges, choosing understanding over judgment. It's about those little choices we make every day, those moments where we can either escalate conflict or be a source of peace. And I think that's where Mary's example can be so helpful. She didn't set out to change the world with a grand political movement or social reform. She simply said yes to God. And in doing so, she became the vessel for the Prince of Peace to enter the world. And that's the paradox, isn't it? True peacemaking often starts with the most humble acts of surrender and service. It's about letting go of our need to be right, to be in control, and instead allowing God's love to flow through us. So maybe being an instrument of peace isn't about having all the answers or solving the world's problems single-handedly. Maybe it's about cultivating a spirit of peace within ourselves, a willingness to be present to the needs of others, to offer kindness and compassion even in the face of negativity. And perhaps that's the most radical act of all, choosing to be a beacon of hope and love in a world that often feels consumed by darkness and despair. It's about reflecting the peace of Christ in our words, our actions, and our very being. It's a challenge for sure, but one that feels incredibly hopeful and inspiring. Hmm. And as we close out our deep dive today, I'm left with a sense of gratitude for the wisdom and guidance offered by the readings by Our Lady of Guadalupe and by the timeless words of St. Francis. And may that gratitude inspire us all to go forth and be instruments of peace in our own unique ways, spreading God's love and grace wherever we go. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.